I'd love to hear your thoughts about GPT three. Yeah, yeah, the and, yeah in the last in the last few months, we've had you know we've we've the world has now seen a, a chat engine or a text engine, I should say, called GPT three. Um, that you know, I think it it still you know it does not pass a Turing test. You know, there are no real claims that it passes the Turing test, right? You know, this is comes out of the group at OpenAI, and you know they're you know they've been relatively careful in what they've claimed about this system. But I think this 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 uh, uh, as clearly as Eugene Gustman was not in advance over Eliza, it is equally clear that this is a major advance it over is. over over Eliza or really over anything that the world has seen before. Uh, this is a text engine that can come up with kind of on topic you know, reasonable sounding completions to just about anything that you ask. You can ask it to write a poem about topic X in the style of poet Y, mm -hmm. and it will have a go at that. Yeah. And it will do, you know, not a perf not a great job, not an amazing job, but, you know, a passable job, you know, definitely, you know, as, as good as, you know, you know, in, in, in many cases, I would say better than I would have done, right? Uh, you know, you can ask it to write, you know, an essay, like a student essay about mm -hmm. pretty much any topic, and it will get something that I am pretty sure would get at least a B minus, you know, in most, you know, high school or even college classes, right? And, you know, in some sense, you know, the way that it did this, the way that it achieves this, um, you know, Scott Alexander of the, you know, the much uh, mourned blog, uh, Slate Star Codex, uh, had a wonderful way of putting it. He said that they basically just ground up the entire internet into a slurry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you know, and I, I to tell you the truth, I had wondered for a while why nobody had tried that, right? Like why not write a chat bot by just doing deep learning over a corpus consisting of the entire web. Right. right. And and so so the, so uh now they finally have done that. Right. And, you know, the results are are very impressive. You know, it's not clear that, you know, people can argue about whether this is truly a step toward general AI or not. But this is an amazing capability uh, that, you know, uh, uh, we didn't have a few years ago that, you know, if, if a few years ago, if you had told me that we would have it now, that would have surprised me. Yeah. And I think that anyone who denies that is just not engaging with with what's there. So their model it takes a large part of the internet and mm -hmm. compresses it in a small number of parameters mm -hmm. relative to the size of the internet mm -hmm. and is able to, without fine tuning, uh, do a basic kind of a, a querying mechanism, just like you described where you specify a kind of poet and then the, you want to write a poem. And it somehow is able to do basically a lookup on the internet well, of, of relevant things. I mean, that's what. It, I mean, I mean, I mean. The, the, how else do you explain it? Well, okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, the the training involved, you know, massive amounts of data from the internet, and actually took lots and lots of computer power, lots of electricity, right? You know, there there are some some very prosaic reasons why this wasn't done earlier, right? Right. But um, you know, it costs some tens of millions of dollars, I think. You know, uh, less, just, just but, for oh, but okay, approximately okay. like a few million dollars. Oh, okay, okay. Oh really? Okay. I, 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 it's more like you know, four as you, or five. Oh, all right, all right. Thank you. I mean, as they as they scale it up, you know, it will it'll you cost. Know, but it'll then the, yeah. the hope is cost comes down yeah. uh -huh, and all uh -huh, that kind uh -huh, of stuff. Uh -huh. But um, basically, you know, it is a neural net. You know, so I mean, I mean, or what's now called a deep net, but you know, they're basically the same thing, right? So it's a it's a form of you know uh, uh, algorithm that people have known about for decades, right? Uh, but it is constantly trying to solve the problem, predict the next word, right? So it's just trying to uh, um, um, predict what comes next. It's not trying to decide what, what it should say, what ought to be true. It's trying to predict what someone who had said all of the words up to the preceding one would say next. Although to push back on that, that's how it's trained. But that's right. No, but it's arguable, arguable. Yeah, that our very cognition could be a mechanism as that simple. As oh, that of simple. course, of course. I never said that it wasn't right. But I, <laughs> but yeah. But I mean, I mean, I mean, in some sense, that that is, you know, if there is a deep philosophical question that's raised by GPT three, then that is it. Right? Are we doing anything other than you know this. this predictive processing, just trying to constantly trying to fill in a blank of what would come next after what we just said up to this point? Is that what I'm doing right now? 
is it possible so the the intuition that a lot of people have will look this thing is not going to be able to reason the mountain everest question do you think it's possible the gpt 5 6 and 7 would be able to with this exact same process begin to look uh, do something that looks like is indistinguishable to us humans from reasoning. I mean, the truth is that we don't really know what the limits are, right? right because exactly. That's because you know what we've seen so far is that you know GPT three was basically the same thing as GPT two, but just with you know a much larger uh, 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 network, you know, more training time, m bigger training corpus, right? And it was you know very noticeably better. Yeah. Right than than its immediate predecessor, so uh, we you know we don't know where you hit the ceiling here, right? I mean that's the that's the amazing part, and maybe also the scary part, right? That uh, you know now my guess would be that that you know at some point like there has to be diminishing returns, like it can't be that simple, can it? <laughs> right, right. Well, but yeah. I, I I I wish that I had more to base that guess on. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some yeah. people say that there will be a limitation on the, we're going to hit a limit on the amount of data that's on the internet. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, so so sure. So, so there's certainly that limit. I mean, there's also, um, you know, like if, if you are looking for questions that will stump GPT-3, right, you can come up with some without, you know, like, you know, even getting it to learn how to balance parentheses, right? right. Like it can, you know, it, it doesn't do such a great job, right? Uh, you know, like, like you know, and, and you know, and, and its failures are, are, are ironic, right? Like, like basic arithmetic, basic right? And you, arithmetic. Think, and you think, you know, isn't that what computers are supposed to be best at? Yeah. Isn't that where computers already had us beat a century ago? Yeah. Right. And, you know, and yet that's where GPT-3 struggles, right? Yeah. But it's, it's amazing, you know, that it's almost like a young child in that yeah. way, right? That, uh, uh, um, but, but uh, somehow, you know, because it is just trying to predict what, what, uh, comes next, it doesn't know when it should stop doing that and start doing something very different, like some ex more exact logical reasoning, right? And so, so you know, the uh, uh, you know, you one one is naturally led to guess that our brain sort of has some element of predictive processing, but that it's coupled to other mechanisms, right? That it's yeah. coupled to, you know, first of all, visual reasoning, which GPT-3 also doesn't have any of, right? Although there's State some demonstration that the, there's a lot of promise there. That's, using oh yeah, it, it can complete images, that's right. Yeah, and, and using Although, exact same kind of transformer mechanisms mm -hmm. to like watch videos on YouTube. Mm. And uh, so the same, mm -hmm. uh, the same self-supervised mechanism to be able to learn. It'd be fascinating to think what kind of completions you could do. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Although, like, if, if we ask it to, like, you know, a word problem that involves reasoning about the locations of things in space, yeah. I don't think it does such a great job on those. Right. To, to take right. an example, and so, so the the guess would be, well, you know, humans have a lot of predictive processing, a lot of just filling in the blanks, but we also have these other mechanisms that we can couple to or that we can sort of call as subroutines when we need to. And that maybe, maybe you know, uh, to, to go further, that, that one, would, one would want to integrate other forms of reasoning.